Hey folks, Quilateen here, and welcome to some more Let's Try Europa Universalis 4 Conquest of Paradise. Again, this is not going to be a Let's Play, this is going to be us dabbling with some of the new mechanics that are introduced in Conquest of Paradise. Now, what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to play as one of the native tribes. Um, I want to play as one of the one province ones, just because that will give us the ability to play with the migration rules. So I think I'm going to take the Ottawa over here. As far as I know, there's not going to be a tremendous difference. At the start, you start with a random leader assigned. Oh, not all of them. Well, that's interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, so some might be stronger than others if you happen to find one with a stronger leader. Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe all the one province ones all start with a random leader. It looks like that's the case. Whereas the ones that have multiple provinces, the Huron, the Iroquois, the Susquehanna. Iroquois is pronounced right, damn it. Iroquois is also fine, but Iroquois is not wrong. Let's get that out of the way right away. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Ottawa. Now, you can play as one of the native tribes just with the vanilla game, just with regular Europe Universalis 4. You don't need any expansion to do that. And as of patch 1.4, there are more of them, and there's a lot of really new, interesting mechanics. Uh, again, you know, it's that, it's that paradox tradition. Most of the changes come free in the patch. Only a few things actually require the DLC. And in this case, I'm going to turn on the random new world option. Now, originally when the game was announced, you would not be able to use the random new world when you were playing natives. However, at some point that changed. Uh, and now you can, so let's go ahead and play that. So I've picked Ottawa here, but I have no idea what the world is actually going to look like once I get inside the game. Oh, well, let's see. Random new world, creating mountains. Takes a little bit of extra time to generate the map the first time when the game is randomized. And let's see what it gives us. Hopefully, maybe. There we go. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the known world right now. Ooh, this is quite a fractured continent. Sometimes the uh, the new world still gets a sort of a big mega continent, much like it sort of is in real life. You know, a mega continent with like a little connecting bridge somewhere along the way. But looks like it's going to be a series of islands now, which is actually going to be pretty good for us because we're going to start a little bit more isolated. Although, oh, this is awful. I can't migrate. We are we are packed in like sardines over here. You know what? I'm actually going to regenerate the map. It'll be a good... Ex we can we can demonstrate the different types of maps that can go on. But I really want to uh, start near some empty space so I can play with the migration. We're only going to play, you know, <clears throat> a few years, maybe a couple of decades, something like that, just to get a feel for it, uh, for the new mechanics. And then we'll, uh, we'll end this little let's try here. Uh, so once again, let's go over here. Let's pick the Ottawa once more. We're still in Random World. Yes, let's go and regenerate a new map and see how we do. And hopefully this one's got a little bit of open space. I actually like the idea of that sort of archipelago kind of new world. Uh, and actually not having space to colonize would mean you'd be tremendously protected from uh, from the Europeans. However, as a one province nation, we'd have a bit of a hard time. Okay, so we, this time we actually have some room to move. I think we'd like to make friends with the Iroquois as quickly as possible. Um, hopefully we've got that as a mission. Let's go through some of the tabs really quickly and see what's what. <clears throat> so... Our government, our ruler, oh, 531, not bad at all. We are Native Council, which gives us a 33% discount to stability cost and a 50% reduction in our land maintenance, which is very nice. Uh, unlike the way things used to work way back in, in vanilla originally, you do not get a penalty to your power points each month. You get what you actually are supposed to earn. And you can save a lot of them. You can see we can save about 3,500 power points in uh, admin, probably the same in every category, yeah. Which, which is quite a bit, which we need to. The uh, diplomacy stream is going to be pretty standard. Economy, we don't really start with an economy, <clears throat> is one thing. I mean, as a one-province nation that doesn't really have any technology, we have no, um, no efficiency bonus to taxation, production, or trade. Not very strong overall, so we don't have a whole lot of money kicking around. Although we do have the 50% reduction in cost for our land maintenance, which is very nice. Technology-wise, we're in the North America group, which is 350% of normal. That's plus 250%. It's another way to look at it. <clears throat> so we are paying a lot more. It's going to take uh, 2,000 power points just to get to tech level 2. And most European nations, of course, start in 3 everywhere. So we're very, very far behind. That's why playing as a native nation used to be very dull. 
You didn't get technologies for a long time. You didn't unlock the ability to build a building for a long time or colonize or do anything like that, which meant you really didn't have anything to do for a long, long time in the game. Very, very dull. So that's been advanced. The ideas are still mostly uh, the same as in a normal thing. The thing is, because getting to tech level four and administrative technology will take so long, you're probably not going to unlock one of these for a really long time. We do start out with 20% faster manpower recovery speed, which is quite nice. We don't have a deep manpower pool, but it'll recover quickly. We also get a 100% bonus to prestige from land battle. So we will be swimming in prestige quite a bit. Uh, there are some native ideas, but again, we won't get any of these for a very, very long time. Morale bonus, uh, cheaper idea cost, better production efficiency, stability cost discount, uh, a discount or an improvement to your national revolt risk, so reduced national revolt risk, 20% more manpower, and 25% global settler increase. And when we complete everything, we get plus one diplomatic relations. Of course, this sort of thing won't happen until well after the Europeans have come over. And maybe we've had an opportunity to westernize. I'm not sure what the uh, late game native play is going to be like. Again, this is a let's try. It's semi-blind. We've got three missions here. I absolutely agree that I would love to get an alliance with the Iroquois. Uh, and in fact, maybe... Uh, well, the Hurons look huge, but it's the province sides are quite a bit bigger. They're a three-province nation, so they're about equal there. Uh, I'm going to wait a tick before I accept, because I want to see... It. Look, Guantanamo. Yeah, you really get mixed up. This is Puerto Rico over here, so the province names are all, all mangled up as well. Oh, and I, we didn't talk about the geography this time. It looks like we might actually have one big supercontinent, but with, uh, with some bottlenecks going on, which is kind of interesting, actually. And some dead space over here, so we're actually going to be migrating probably closer to Europe, which means we're going to run into them quite early, which might mean we'll get um, just crushed early on and eliminated completely we might get uh, subjugated into a protectorate which actually wouldn't be too bad that's a new type of sort of vassaling we'd be very be far behind in tech so we probably wouldn't become a vassal we might become a protectorate we'd in addition to the normal rules we'd also give up 50 percent of our trade but I, I trade power i suppose but we'd get a 25 percent discount on technology which would not be a bad thing in any way whatsoever we don't have any special national decisions. Uh, I believe tribalism gives us the Encourage Divination and Introduce Vision Quest quests, both of which give us plus 5% stability cost modifier, which is bad, and then some negative revolt risk and a little bit of prestige. These don't seem like very strong decisions to take, so I'll probably just end up ignoring them. Um, this screen, uh, we can boost stability right away. We actually start with 104 administrative power for some reason. I don't know why we actually started with so much. In the other test games I was running, we didn't start with that much. Maybe based on your leader? I'm not sure. But uh, we've got a significant discount on stability, so we will go ahead and take that. In fact, I strongly suspect we'll go all the way up to a plus three stability. That's our decision to do Encourage Divination, which I'm just going to get rid of there. Totemism we start with as a religion. And on this map, now normally North America is whoops, very totemism up until you get into the sort of mexico region that's where animists start to kick in so here it looks like we're still going to be pretty surrounded by totemism which is going to be good for us because we are a minor power so we might be in trouble otherwise our force limit is three of five which is not very high um, there is a building that gives you plus 10 force limit though so if we were planning on staying put we'd probably build all those but of course remember if we're migrating we lose all of our buildings so it becomes a, a low priority task i think for us to build any buildings whatsoever we could stay where we are we could do that but the thing is we don't really have any war targets i suppose we could go after the uh, mohicans here in uh in niagara and the sioux also uh, the Abenaki in the Sioux province. We could go after these. This is Micmacs are probably a single province as well. So okay, I guess we'd have a couple of targets. Um, what's the tax base here? We actually have a tax base of six in Puerto Rico? And six in St. Martin. Okay. And seven in Martinique. Oh, wow. Because okay, normally playing as a... Uh, in the far north, in the normal North American map, starting as the Ottawa, you'd have a tax base of two and you could move to a province at a three. So our tax base is dramatically higher here. I'm tempted to actually stay put and just blockade and then see if we can't expand. Um, there is, well, we'll get to there right now, I suppose. So as a native, your final tab is a little bit different because natives can't form vassalages and, and whatnot. So normally, in as of um, Conquest of Paradise, this tab for a typical nation is where you keep track of your vassals and so on. Here we get the special native tab, which is quite interesting. If we join a federation, it will be presented here. A federation is sort of like a coalition, but it also works on the defensive. Um, so you can, you can form a coalition, you can invite other nations to join it. And what it is, if anyone declares, if anyone from outside or 
I say coalition, you can form a federation. If anyone outside the federation attacks anyone inside the federation, the federation declares war on them, uh, which is very strong. Now, it doesn't prevent internal warfare. So for example, if I formed a federation with the Iroquois, they would still be able to attack me, which would be unpleasant. We could still form alliances, of course, so that's certainly a possibility. Federation's there. Every five years, we can migrate. So it does start on cooldown, so we've got to wait until 1449 before we can do our first migration. And uh, there's something that can allow us to uh, reduce that by 25%. So now we're talking about every three years, nine months, we'll be able to migrate. And what do you get out of migrating? Well, you do move to somewhere new. You leave all your buildings behind while they get destroyed. So uh, there's a disadvantage there because you're leaving the buildings behind. The advantage is every time you migrate, you get plus 50 power in each of the three categories. So that works out to 10 power points in each category per year, or a little less than one per month. Um, somewhere around like 2.5 net power points per month, but divided among all three categories. Now, if again, if you do reduce this to every three years, nine months, now I'm not gonna do the math right here, but I suspect that it translates to a, a little over one power point for each of the three categories per month. So, you know, maybe around four power points total, which is not bad. You're doing that instead of building buildings. It doesn't mean you save money on your buildings. There's something to be said for that. Again, I don't have a lot of money right now, so I'm probably not going to hire a, uh, an advisor. We'll look at what buildings you can build, but I won't be building any. We've got the Earthworks, 25% defensiveness. Palisade, plus one fort level. Fortified House, plus 10 land force limit. And again, that would bring our force limit from 5 to 15. It is a very potent building. And certainly, if you're going to be staying anywhere, you're going to want to build that ASAP. Ceremonial Fire Pit reduces the advisor cost by 50%, which is good. That's going to be, I think, both the maintenance and the hiring fee, which is very strong. 25% more tax income, which is pretty good, especially where we are. It's really wealthy tax income. I think what we might do is move to Martinique and then maybe declare war on the Sioux or... Uh, well, the Abenaki or the Micmacs, for example, which will put us in good position. We may as well move to here, get maximum tax base and see what we're doing. What are the rest of the buildings? 25% um, more production, plus one tax income, right? Just like a temple. The Sweat Lodge, which is plus three diplomatic reputation. Each one of these seems to cost 10 gold plus 10 power of some kind, which is not very expensive. But again, if you're leaving them behind, then it starts to hurt a lot more and takes 12 months to build. So if I'm going to be migrating four years after that, it's really not worth building most of these. Great Trail, yeah, 25% more local manpower. And the Three Sisters Field is 25% goods produced. So I think that mostly covers that. We're going to let time tick by really slowly at first here just to see what the Iroquois might do with us. We're going to go right away. Oh, they've already mass allied with three people. Um, we're going to go and send an improved relations right away. They haven't gone negative, though. So, oh, why did my alliance quest go away right away? That's very annoying. And I only get three prestige from making friends with the Iroquois. And yeah, we do get plus one stability from gaining prestige. We're not going to get a lot of prestige right now. So I'm going to take this quest. We'll see about making friends over there. Uh, can, you can never have too much grain. All right. So we've got grain over here. Excellent. And I think what we might do is actually make friends with Niagara as well. Um, you are, oh, you are rival to the Abenaki, which I think I like that idea. I'm going to do that myself, actually. So that'll increase our friendship uh, build up. And I think I'm going to be going to war with them at some point anyway. Iroquois, who are you? You rivaled the Hurons. Ottawa. Oh, you rivaled with me? You bastards. Mm, I'll keep suck. Well, no, you know what? Let's see if we can't uh, make friends with the Hurons, actually. Yeah, I think that's what we'll end up doing. All right, and we're going to crank up the speed really, really soon. Can we ally with you yet? No. You're hostile towards me, but you're not rivaled. You have a lot of enemies, though. Ooh, might be dangerous. All right, so we'll probably run most of the game on speed 5, actually. We're going to let this autosave go and kick the speed to the max, because we're not going to have a whole lot to do. We have more to do than we used to playing as natives. We still don't have that much. I mean, as a one-province minor nation, even in Europe, you're not going to have that much to do. We'll probably put out a couple more units, though, just to bring us up to our force limit. I'm going to feel a little bit more comfortable if we do that. And we might... Could we afford a No, we can't afford a leader. We could get the 50% discount at some point, but 0.59. So getting one leader would put us into the uh, negatives. And I think I would rather keep up my maintenance as much as possible. Go ahead and make our personal leader into a military leader. 0310. It's not awesome, but, you know, I guess it's better than not having anything. And I think we'll just fast forward the next four years until we can uh, 
until we can migrate and get some power points. We'll probably be able to get some ideas soon. A large revolt. You get six peasants. That's more than we have as a force. It's a good thing we have the maintenance still cranked up. He said, covering up the fact that he screwed up by leaving the maintenance on. Um, yeah, we're actually going to lose this battle, like, completely. How come we got... That was an event, because our revolt risk is zero. We had no pop-up going on whatsoever. This is just an event that's actually going to screw us. We lost. So, we're screwed. They want lowered taxes. Well, I will boost stability, actually. I really wish there was a flag for that. Anytime I can boost stability, please show me a flag. Yeah, we're going to have to wait until they take a province and then just... Oh, we've lost all our military. They moved to St. Martin, which spawned some natives. And we lost every... That is a crap event. Let's be honest there. That, that just screwed me. Well, not that much, frankly. What are we going to do? Um, with that army. We're not going to go to war with the Iroquois. So, yeah. Alright, whatever. Hey, cut back on our maintenance. Now we're not paying anything for our army maintenance. We could build some ships, I think. No, we haven't unlocked naval units. Never mind. I thought maybe we'd unlocked some war canoes or something, but we didn't. So this is about the fall. And then we'll just have to give in to their demands. To lower taxes. Ugh. Yeah, close to enforcing demands. Well, we'll just we'll just accept it. It's fine. Fifty percent reduced taxes. Well, we don't make that much money anyway, so what the hell can we do? We'll rebuild our army. <laughs> wow, what crap luck! And I just finished like building up my army again. Might as well queue up the maximum. Spend all my money on that. I'll have to wait for three more gold before we can actually build up to our force limit again. All right. Just horribly unfortunate luck. The sort of thing that if that sort of thing happens to you, you should just restart. Like, no, it was a random event. Bastards. Bastards. If I had a better ruler, it might have been okay. If my troops hadn't, well, I don't know. If I'd been above my force limit, I don't know what really I could have done. There might have been something. But this, again, is just a let's try. We're just going to play for, you know, a decade or two, see how it goes. Our diplomats is back. So who does like us at this point? Um, opinions of us. The Hurons, yes. <sighs> still hostile towards us. I mean, we're still improving relations, but at plus 113? Like, come on, buddy. <clears throat> we, we don't even neighbor each other. Why are you being hostile? <gasps> oh, the Abenaki actually took over territory. You're very dangerous. Well, the Micmacs, I should actually make friends with them. <clears throat> we might actually want to form a, co a federation. Although, who else are we going to invite to the federation? But some sort of protection against the Abenaki. Opposing military schools. Either way, we lose stability. Oh, we're just getting all the good events. Um, we can get stability or we can get discipline. Actually, or sorry, we can get morale or discipline. I, I tend to like discipline more. We'll inflict damage. Luckily, we'll do this. In fact, um... I will boost all the way up to plus three. I just need a few more points. Again, I wish there was a flag. Merge. Sign you, at least. We don't need to hire a leader. All right, Hurons are now maxed out. So what was our quest? <clears throat> right, relations with the Iroquois, at least 100. Which is never going to happen. Well. Yeah, not much. Let's just cancel the quest. God damn it. I have to wait for a new one now. Let's go and beat up these guys, since they killed my last army. There we go. A little bit of vengeance. Oh, there's not even attrition over here. Let's stand over there, then. And we can build our other archer once again. Alright, we'll move back. It's fine. So, we just have to wait uh, 11 months. November 11th, we will be able to migrate to St. Martin. Oh, an excellent name. It would actually be nice to get some explorers, or conquistadors, rather, so we can explore the Terra Incognita. I don't know if it's going to reveal it to us when we colonize St. Martin. I don't think so, but it's possible. So, the other thing you'll see is uh, the Micmac might end up moving. 
Like, we're all in the same cooldown, and the AI moves exactly on November 11th. And if you don't remember to pause, it takes a second before the uh, flag shows up. So you tend to blow by it, and you just see, like, everyone shift their borders. Although we don't have a whole lot of one province neighbors kicking around. So there's only so much movement that can happen. Like, the uh, Pe Petawatomi. Oh, yeah, Petawawa, maybe. Uh, can't move. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see? See what I said? The Picot just moved over by one. And the Micmacs moved to Martinique. Martinique is the place with uh, the seven tax base, which is actually what I wanted. So I'm a little bit annoyed. But I'll still make the move because, A, we get the power points. Yeah, we're going to migrate to St. Martin. 50 of each. Migrate. Bam. And we're there. Oh, it even moves our army for us. I didn't realize that. And, um, yeah, so we got a CB against a nation that's the same size as us. They do have more forces. But now is an excellent time. We're actually going to go and build some buildings as soon as we have some money again. Right, we spent all our money rebuilding our goddamn an alliance. Yeah, I'm going to turn that down. Although, maybe I shouldn't because you actually have more troops than I do. I probably should have done that. Um, we could federate. You know what? I will ally. I'm actually worried about uh, the Hurons over here. Their chief is militaristic. Militaristic. Iroquois are balanced. Oh, it did reveal St. Thomas. Oh, okay. Which has a tax base of seven. Oh, we might end up wounding there. If uh, the Micmac move there, that's okay. Because we can just take this one, still get a higher tax base, and feel good about ourselves. All right, we're pretty safe. We do still have some diplomats. We also have merchants. Oh, I didn't actually check the trade nodes on this map. <gasps> Ooh, the Hudson Bay. And, okay, we're in it. Oh, excellent. And we can see it. Because that's a problem in North America. A lot of people will start in the Gulf of St. Lawrence and then not be able to actually trade there. Very annoying. Uh, what else do we have revealed? We have this node, the Mississippi River node, which is too far for us to trade from. Uh, it's 433. And that's the only other node we know about. Obviously, there is the, sorry, the Mexico trade node and California over here. Oh, yeah, it's written on big derp. Uh, Chesapeake Bay, which is going to be somewhere over here. So those trade nodes, I mean, we vaguely know exist, but we haven't actually discovered them. It's very nice that we actually do know this one because now we should be able to get some amount of trade income, which is nice. We don't get any production at all. Citizen Cities demand old rights. Lose a stability or... Or get nothing? Or nothing happens? Well, I guess we'll go with the nothing happens choice. And I'm going to go ahead and lose stability to plus three. Might be overkill. Maybe I should wait for an event, but... Uh, oh, we're we've got Coco? Seriously? I don't remember where I see the, uh, the goods on the screen. What is this? Oh, normal winter. We're in the Arctic. Yeah, that's true. We are, aren't we? 100% are staying there. We should actually investigate this. Why is it a question mark? Maybe I misread that. Is it not happening here? I don't know. We're trading in cocoa, I thought it said. I'm confused. We can invest in a native advancement. So... Big question is, what do we get first? Um, do we get the 100% discount to diplomatic technology cost? Do we get the plus one colonist, which we can't afford because the maintenance would kill us? Do we get trade diplomacy? Do we get smoke ceremonies? Do we get travel? I don't think we actually talked about these, did I? Um, I as I did in a previous video, and then I my recorder crashed. So I'm trying to remember if I've properly gone through these tabs, if I talked about the native ideas. No, I did. I talked about federation, migration. I hope I did. No, this is what we get instead of technology, really, because the technology is so goddamn expensive. Uh, the ideas cost 500 diplomatic points. Also, instead of actual ideas, because we can't unlock those for ages and ages and ages. So we get a few choices in all three categories. And unlike normal ideas, you can pick them in any order you want. So we could start with the massively discounted diplomatic technology cost if we wanted to tech up. And I think we're kind of far away still from wanting to do that. I like the idea of doing the migration cooldown. Uh, as our pick. I think we're going to play a very migratory people for now. Um, we'll just like run away from our enemies for a while before we do anything. It would be nice to do the colonial, colonial thing, but we just can't afford it. So yeah, I'll go with the uh, migration cooldown reduction. So now it's quite a bit faster. We'll be able to do it in 53 here. Very nice. We got fur in St. Martin. Okay, well that could work. 
demand is higher than supply, the price is quite good. There's some trade happening, not much because we don't have the, the overseas stuff, but if we look at the node, everything is staying here and we're collecting 50% of it. So it would be nice to build some ships and increase our trade power there. Uh, oh, th I was talking about maybe building buildings. Oh, look at that. I had quite a bit of movement actually. Hurons are still a three uh, province nation. Oh no, no, wait, I misread the map. Never mind, everything is still the same. Um, I really could increase my force limit higher, but I think that would be foolish. I could increase my tax base. No, we're just gonna keep doing the migrating thing. I'm not gonna rush into another building. Let's just go back to speed five and hope that uh, our alliances hold up if anyone declares war on us. And other than that, we'll just keep migrating around. The gameplay as a native would be completely different if you're playing someone with multiple provinces, playing the Iroquois, the Hurons, or of course, like the powerhouse like the Aztec. Uh, we have a new ruler and a stability drop. You know what? I'm going to leave it at plus two for now. We'll see if we can't unlock some more ideas, which will be quite handy. I wonder if we can invite some of these folks to a federation. You're hostile towards me. Nice. You are not hostile towards me, Shawnee. Let's improve some relations and, and do that. If the, uh, the th how many are we? Three, five, six, seven. Seven one province miners over here uh, formed a big federation. Oh, we've got Pohantan over here as well. Uh, then we might actually be able to stand up against the big boys, which would be pretty handy. I think that's actually what we're going to have to do. And if I can start it, I'll be very happy. We're going to invite to a federation over here. We're going to get the ball rolling. So I will be the federation leader. Every time you lose, you die, um, there's a um, there's sort of an election to pick the, uh, the new leader of the federation. Right now, Ottawa is leading. And, and it's the country with the highest federal authority becomes new leader. And I don't know what that's decided on. The Micmac have two. I don't know, like, what that is. I, I couldn't find it. I was expecting a little pull down over here. Um, federal authority. Oh, oh, it's explained here. Oh, I have negative prestige, so it's quite bad, but I have diplomatic things. So if I get my prestige above, then there's going to be a good chance that I can become leader again even after I die. But I've, I've got plenty of time for that. So that's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see if we can't make friends with some more folks down here. Uh, again, hostile, which is not good. Plus 55 is really not bad. Um, a lot of distance, which is not going to be helpful. Yeah, but we might be able to overcome that. Oh, we've got a free diplomat, actually. So let's go ahead. Let's see if we can't... Um, oh, we're sucking up to Shawnee right now. Yeah, we'll go and see if we can pull these folks in as well. If they're neighbors, they might join together. Uh, the distance penalty was to... To the Federation of Ottawa. It's not to Ottawa specifically. It's the Federation of... Unless that's just what I'm called now. No, I don't think so. Generation of cowards. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we're going to take the manpower hit. Uh, 10 years of minus 10 discipline sucks. I mean, losing manpower sucks as well, but we're, we're capped right now. And we're not planning a war, so we can afford to do that. And if uh, some little skirmish does break out, at least we'll have full, um, full discipline. I was going to say we can probably pick a military idea now. 10% more morale. Plus one leader shock. 33% land force limit modifier. I think I really like that idea. Um, I mean, just having more powerful units is good. Uh, most, usually it's better, but I don't like the numbers that I'm presenting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one, which will increase our force limit to seven. So, And I'm still not building buildings, so I may as well bring myself up to the full seven units that I can field. I feel pretty good. I don't have a CB against the Sioux, but honestly, I, I feel like I would like to do that. I can't fabricate claims. Natives cannot do that. So I've got to wait for, like, another kind of legitimate thing. I could declare war against Martinique and try to humiliate them. Of course, they've got more troops than I do, so I wouldn't do that. But again, despite the fact that we're in a federation, we can definitely do that. That is allowed. Still no goes over here. It's got to be getting closer. Ooh. Oh, that's a rebellion. And the rebellion broke. Okay. Yeah, very close. We can migrate again pretty soon. I'm going to try not to uh, miss it by too many days this time, because I think it was on the 19th last time, so I missed it by like eight days. Well, that's what happens at speed five, right? Stuff just goes by super fast. So it's going to be August 19th. So let's pull it back when I get to August. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll play a few more years of this and just see how it goes, just to get the taste, just to get a flavor. Oh, we can finally get a new quest. Insult our rival. And what do we get out of that? Hmm, quite a good stuff. I would love to improve our prestige, but that's not really in the cards right now. So let's go ahead. We'll send, uh, well, my 
My diplomats are currently busy. Let's let them finish. There's not that much time left. Oh, there we go. And we are going to go to St. Thomas. Migrate, get plus 50 of every power. Excellent. And now we are do have a slightly higher tax base. And actually, I just realized that the penalty to uh, our taxes was local to where the uh, those rebels took over. So we left that behind pretty damn quick. All right. Yeah, more points. We'll just keep playing that. Uh, six and seven. So, I mean, we'll keep bouncing around. And we're still in Arctic territory. Good God, it's so goddamn cold. We could show off, like, again, though the winter map, but who wants to see that? Trading in fur again, which, thank God, because it's so cold, we need the fur. Again, we've got some money. We could build some buildings, but I'm going to keep, you know, building up the war chest. We are making over a gold per uh, per turn right now. Ooh, a taxation kickback. Plus 20%. Nice. Naval research wrong. I don't want to lose more prestige, actually. It's very interesting, because I want to stay as the Federation leader. Well, what's the benefit of being the leader? More morale and more diplomatic reputation. It's handy, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Like, losing power sucks. All right, let's go ahead and lose the prestige. We're not really in a good situation to rebuild our prestige anyway, so we're not going to be in a leader. We can get another advancement, our first admin idea. So we can get the cheaper build costs, which helps if you're migrating and rebuilding buildings. It makes it a lot less painful. I think the tax modifier might be good. We don't need the stability cost. We don't need the revolt risk. I'm just going to go for the tax modifier. We're going to see if we can't make some more bank. We've maxed out our reputation or uh, our, our relationship with the Shawnee. They still would not accept the Federation. Actually, our distance has gone up, which kind of sucks. Send insult. Boom. It'll give him a CB, but we're not adjacent. What the hell? We'll take the free power. And then what we're going to do is improve more relations. We'll just try to... We'll keep sucking up with, uh, with everyone who's nearby and not actively hostile towards us. Improve our prestige. I'm not going to encourage divinations. Well... Could boost our stability. No. We don't have a revolt risk. It's fine. I wonder if I, I will get any relevant events or anything like that by just taking this quest. I actually don't know. Doesn't give me a modifier up here, does it? That would be nice. It does not. I mean, it's going to move positively anyway, because it always moves towards zero. I lost the effects of trading in Coco. I don't I don't know how we were trading in Coco in the first place. Oh. Where did the Lenape come from? Let's improve more relations. We might actually be able to swing across here and tuck ourselves in next to our smaller neighbors. Plus, it's a great way to explore very, very slowly. We're actually making enough money. I could consider getting an advisor. I mean, he'd offset his own cost a tiny bit. Not much, but a tiny bit. More advancements. Uh, more reputation would actually be pretty potent. Or the better reputation uh, um, relations over time as well. We're not going to go for the colonists. We could actually... I think colonizing would cost us about two gold per month. Something around there. We'd almost be able to... We'd be able to cover about half of it. And we've got enough money in here to cover it for 66 months which is uh, five and a half years. And that's not bad. Grabbing the colonists becomes a possibility very, very soon. I don't think quite yet. I think I'm going to go for the diplomatic reputation, which actually does help our um, federal authority, except that, oh, actually our federal authority is better. That is blank with zero federal authority. That's interesting that it doesn't like, does it pick one at random? Or is it still going to pick the highest one and just not listing it? Does the Federation break down if no one has positive federal authority? That would be really annoying, actually. That actually would be terrible. Well, I mean, I guess we could rebuild it. So, we have to, wait, I, did I not set up a merchant in the trade node? I thought I did. Oh, maybe it went away when I moved. Oh, now that's something that's going to screw me. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think I can go to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Oh, I don't know where it is. Um, I, I don't make much money, but I think I'd rather lose the money than the stability. It's actually not a great choice either way. 
Hey, what happened? Oh, they must have moved right over here into the Terra Incognita. Interesting. Um, what I think I will do is keep some distance between me and, me and the Abenaki and move to Kurokao. Although, I could get blocked. If I move to Martinique, I can probably get around here faster. No, I'll move to Martinique. When is the next time to migrate? I think that's fine. So I could be getting more power if I did have another advisor, but the money, it would just, it would eat all of our balance. I would like to have money in the bank. And maybe I should be building buildings. But I don't think so. I don't think it would actually turn a profit in our direction. Positive stability, yeah, we are making some pretty good tax base there. If we can get up to plus three stability, do we want to do that? I think so. Although, again, I could wait for an event and instead... Um, so we're going to migrate to Martinique. Just to get around the block faster. Oh, Guadalupe. The Micmac. Oh! Hang on. I'm trying to remember what's what. Maybe I'm just getting confused about who was where. No, that is those guys. Okay. So yes, we could insult them, but let's not do that. We can invest in a military idea. More morale, more shock. Less attrition. I like the leader shock. Again, we'll make our troops actually more effective. Morale means they'll stick around longer and they won't break as quickly. But this will mean we're actually slightly more offensive. Which I like. Best defense is a good offense. Is a seven. It might be worth building the percentage building. Which is irrigation. Again, I think that's 2.39 per year. God, I hope I've got that right. Tobacco. Nice. Might be doing the entire math on uh, taxation entirely wrong. I should be building buildings all along. Well, you know what? Let's build one for a test. Let's go ahead and do the plus 25. Oh, yeah, because right now, the actual tax income is 1469. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not going to work out the way that um, I would hope because that's divided by there. And yeah, all right. Still, it's fine. So, maximum relations. We might be able to invite some more people at this point. Um, you're positive and not too far. Good. We'll invite the Lenape. Or maybe it's the Lenop. I, I really don't know. You are still unwilling. Oh, because you have a rivalry. No! Eight. So, again, our troops are going to be completely wiped out. And I'm going to have to spend my entire budget rebuilding them. Run away. R run. Thank you win this fight, please. Actually, I should have run into uh, the Micmac territory because we had an alliance. Okay. So, we don't lose our entire army this time. We'll probably still have to do the tax lowering, but that we can live with. We have the manpower to rebuild this. I just don't want to have to spend money to reorganize my platoons again, my regiments. I guess what I really should do is almost lower the maintenance, but honestly, for things like this, no, I want to keep the maintenance up. And anyone's liable to declare war on me every any time. I think uh, I keep going to say Saint Bart's over here, but uh, the Micmac um, probably have a humiliation CB against me. I guess I can look at the uh, offensive CBs here. No, I can't. I like the uh, logo for the Federation though. Yeah, humiliate CB, and they have enough troops, so maybe it almost doesn't matter. Invite to Federation. Oh, and you guys will do it as well. Why can't I invite you? I Oh, I don't have a positive. Why don't I have a positive view about them? You guys should do some relations towards me so I can invite you in. And these guys just hate me. And some other people as well. Still a decent-sized federation going on. 
It'd be really nice if the Micmac would help me out with these rebels, but it's not really in their interest to do so. I did get my uh, my morale back a lot faster, though. I'll get a river crossing. But I can do that, and actually... Traitor factions have broken the back of our country with no choice but accept their demands. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. And we get a stability drop. Awesome! Makes me so happy. Let's spend our way back up to plus two. Recover abysmal prestige. Yeah, I would I would like to do that. That is really bad prestige. Accept cultural shifts. Oh, because we have a different... Um... We lose five stability by changing our dominant culture. But it's totally an accepted culture, so no, that's fine. I don't want to do that. Ugh. So bad. So force limit wise, we're still where we need to be. We're still developing things. Still going top speed. Why do you have low morale? Oh, you moved. All right, we're on different schedules now. I guess I don't have to worry about the distance quite so much. Now that I've got most of the Federation members in place. So, all right. If I declare war. I have allies. Oh yeah, I don't have a CB. And I don't think there's anything I can do for that. There's things I can do to give them a CB. Well, that's pretty much it. Hmm. Our points are zero. As expected. So. Total. Oh yeah. So low because we have... Well, our stability has bounced back. Why else is it so low? How come I'm... I don't know. Oh, there we go. No, it's the same. All right. And... Oh, oh, right. And then it's lower because we've got the event going on here. Less than taxes. 50%. God damn it. Lasts until 79, but we're going to move before that happens. Wave of obscurant, obscurantism. Knowledge is power, more revolt risk, or lose prestige. We can't lose more prestige. We'll take the revolt risk, and we still won't have revolt. We're totally fine. It's really annoying, though. Why is it a 6.2 tax base? I've never seen that before. 6, 7, 5, 6.2. Maybe they have a local event. I don't know. Hmm. It's a good thing we didn't start colonizing. Hey, it's Ontario and Acadia and Barbados. Of course, Barbados and Ontario, they're natural neighbors. That's the way it normally works. We have diplomats available. We could probably just um, keep improving a little bit of relations here and there to make sure things are okay. We get an actual alliance over here. We should probably do that because our... Um, we only get one of four. And you're allied with the Iroquois and the Amanaki. Well, which is kind of awkward, but what can we do? Actually, the Iroquois. Is there anything you might be interested in at this point? Still consider me a rival. You could join the Federation, though, which would be, I think, silly. We'll improve relations a little bit, see if we can't swing something later on. We can invest in another advancement. Um, I think... I'm tempted to unlock the colonists now, but not use them. We've Our better relations over time... We're pretty good relations with everyone that's relevant right now. It's not hard. We, we're not getting stressed too much with our diplomats, so that's going to be okay. See, like that. People are everyone's doing things, improving things, and we can migrate. So I think uh, we could unlock some more territory over here, but I'm going to go ahead and move to St. Bart's. All right, so I can't specifically blame... EU4 for this. There are many games that don't necessarily behave with fraps, which might be a problem with fraps, might be a problem with my graphic driver, might be a problem in the game, I don't know. But EU4 has crashed again. And this is not the first time it has crashed while recording while I try to migrate. So um, it might be the recording or it might just be the migration. There might be a crash of desktop in there. In any case, it looks like our game as the Ottawa tribe has come to an end. Hope you enjoyed this little let's try and stay tuned. We're going to start an actual let's play of EU4 really, really soon. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.